All right, welcome back on uh, PWBA Monday to the Beef and Barnsey Show. And today we have not one, but two very special guests for you. Back again are your hosts, Beef Stew and Barnsey. There we go. Got that part out of the way. Uh, our first person today, she first bowled on our national team at the age of 12. That's right, 12. Uh, she bowled for Weber International. She's got a couple of national titles. Uh, she has been a steady uh, competitor on the PWBA Tour. She's made a dozen shows, knocking on the door, and soon to be a superstar on that PWBA Tour. Three-year coach at Savannah College Art and Design, Verity Crawley. Hello. Thanks for having me. No problem. We, we need to get the English speaking up. Yeah, exactly. Let's take uh, over. I don't know about all that. Yeah, I but, think so. And the one and the only from Latvia, four wins, intercollegiate singles and team championships, a couple of national championships herself. She was on our national team since the year of 14. And maybe most importantly, a shoe model at one point in time, Diana Z. Hey, thank you for having me as well. How are you guys doing? Um, excited. We're, uh, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, my, uh, my wife has designed a chalkboard just for you two here in the back. It's perfect. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I made up one that's not nearly as good, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell us about what you've been doing. I understand that it's uh, a little frustrating at the minute with the, uh, with the ladies tour being on hiatus, so to speak. Yeah. Um, what, what's going on? I mean, we've kind of been doing the same thing as you guys, um, nothing, and doing a couple of live streams and, uh, yeah, just hanging in there pretty much. Well, we're yeah, just trying to, trying to stay busy. Trying to knock your front door down from what I've seen, Verity. <laughs> yeah, trying not to put holes in the walls. I've got to do something to still throw the bowling ball when it's perfect setup. Well, I tell you what. So in case anybody hasn't been paying attention and they haven't been on social media, I've actually got a uh, a little clip of Verity here. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look oh, at this. That's cute. Got a nice little soundtrack going as well. Yeah. Just nice little, all the angles, different drills. <laughs> I love the fan over there that you have a glass of I've got to keep, got to keep my hand cool, got to do my pre-shot routine. And that was before I started wearing bowling shoes. Now I wear bowling shoes so I can actually slide. <laughs> <laughs> I've progressed. So, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen that you've uh, you've got the shoe slider on, but it's not. It's actually the shoe protector, but now exactly. you're on top of it, it actually works. It's very confusing. I know, because normally you have to take them off the bowl, otherwise you're going to fall on your face. Whereas now, if I take it off, I would fall on my face. So I have to leave it on. Very complicated. So uh, talk us through it. What, what did it take to build your lane? A lot of hard work, a lot of sweat. It was really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I, I took, some, took some cushions off the patio on the seats, laid that on the floor, surrounded it with some triple totes, then pillows, then covered, I put a lane pattern down, obviously. Obviously, yeah. And that was it, yeah. Have you then tried full approach the yet, or like three step? I, What's the yeah, most that I, I won't. Because yeah. even when sometimes when I do swing inside, like there's almost sometimes too much power doing that, that the ball bounces a little bit, and I don't want to risk doing any more than <laughs> <laughs> one step. <laughs> I could so see you bouncing it and there just being a hole in your front door, a bowling ball, like, right? Yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been working out a lot as well, because um, what else are we going to do? So, But I, I've been very um, optimistic and positive that the tour is going to come back at some point this year. Um, so, yeah, I've been working out a lot and making sure I stay in shape in case of the tour does come back. I started a 30 day yoga challenge. I'm currently on day seven. Nice. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I can just imagine you flying around in the living room. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> right, Namaste. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> I mean, definitely. I, there's, there's really no, uh, there's no positive for you guys in thinking of, that it's not going to be there because if you stay positive and it is going to be there and it is there, at least you're ready. And if it isn't there, you didn't really lose anything by being positive. So I completely. Yes. Uh, yeah. completely I think either, either way, there's going to be some form of events to bowl, whether that's PWBA or whether that's the Open Championships. Like, there's still going to be something. So we might as well be ready for that, regardless of what it is. Yeah, definitely. So you should have been in Arizona last weekend. <sighs> yes, should have. Nice weather there. <laughs> been, we, we were there last year in what June, and it was absolutely it was boiling. Yeah. Yeah. You used to live there, right, Stu? Arizona? Yeah, not in Tucson, but yes, I did <laughs> used to live in Arizona, yeah. Um, so okay. where, where would you be this weekend? Oof, um, that, no, Washington? Washington. Yes, Washington, yep. Washington, Washington, so, then Sacramento. Okay. So, Spokane, Spokane, Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, Marshall Kent country. <laughs> All right, Diane, you know, you've done some modeling. You, there's been a lot of talk about image and bowlers being in shape. Uh, when you're talking about it, you're talking about it from a performance standpoint, sponsorship standpoint, uh, or, or where are you coming from? Well, this is a very um, long topic. I hope you guys have time. Uh, I've done some um, things on Instagram, and I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, it's also in a bowling journal. So there's three pages on article where I talk about that. And the very first thing that started was I did this video for Columbia 300 Ball a few years back um, that exploded. And my parents, they own a shoe store, and they always hire, like, um, bloggers or models and they have to pay them obviously so they can model and whatever. So one time, I think it was two years ago, I was in my country and my mom was like, well, you can model like, you know, like you can do these shoe modelings and whatever. And I'm like, no, like, I don't think I can. And she was like, well, so she convinced me. I was like, okay, well, let me try. And so we had this professional photographer and he was teaching me how to place the, like hands and it was so, so difficult. Like you didn't realize how difficult it is to be a model. So and the photographer was told me like, oh, your hands have to be relaxed. And I'm like, no, like I'm an athlete. Like I can't, you know. Anyway, so I did this uh, photo shoot. And um, so the pictures came out, babe, whatever. Then I was shopping a few months later and I was in one of the sports stores and I look up and I see an image. It was Tiger Woods, uh, I think Serena Williams. So there's a bunch of like super, super famous athletes. And I think it was an Under Armour store. And like, it hit me and I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, what if I was there? Or what if a bowler would be there? Like in a huge shopping store and just like, it kind of gave me this little inspiration and idea. Um, you know, maybe I should do something more about it. And yeah, and then I called my mom and I was like, hey, like, I want to keep doing some photo shoots for you, like for your store. And then I also did photo shoot for like my kind of fitness little thing. And I posted some pictures and um, yeah, that's kind of where I am now. So you got into it in that Bowler Journal article, you did talk about that you felt like a lot of bowlers should get in shape. Yes. Uh, for performance? For... Well, not necessarily performance, because obviously, if you look at the history, if you look at the people that have won, um, it doesn't. Do. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but like you don't have to have a six pack, obviously, to win. But where I come from, and I think it's very different in America, um, where I come from, the bowlers are not perceived as athletes. Like if you tell somebody from my country, like, oh, you know, a bowler, they're like, what like oh like you drink beer you're not fit obviously so and I just it's more of a um, from a sponsorship perspective that I'm thinking because uh, I think it would be nice to have somebody like I'm dreaming Nike and Adidas that's something like my long term dream but like if somebody from fitness sports industry would come to us I think that would help us as an industry and as bowlers and everybody. So I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm kind of doing it for our whole industry. Well, I certainly agree that, that we all need to be the best uh, version of ourselves, but obviously genes come into play and some people can't 
won't fit in the same model. And I think that's okay. It, our sport is one that, that lends itself to different body types, but uh, there's certainly- Yeah, a I agree because like I had, when I made a post originally on my Instagram and Facebook and I had people say like, oh, like if I'm fat, that means I'm not gonna win. And that's not what I'm saying. Like it is going to help you. I think if you're in the best physical shape that you can be, I think it is going to help your performance as well, but it doesn't mean that if you're not in shape, you're not going to win. Yeah, I think strength comes in a lot of things. Your your format's pretty brutal though, so I do think that that, that plays a part of it. Uh, hey, Barry, we do have a question for you. Uh, so are you going to carry West to the Lucy again? Hopefully he continues losing more weight, so it'll be easier to carry him. <laughs> Fitting right in with the theme although, of the show so although, far. Yeah, last, year, last year he did carry me, but the year before he was heavy. <laughs> you're on like a, you, you're not on the same page. You could have like won it twice and finished almost dead last once if you could have just arranged your scores a little better. Because it feels like one year you bowl really good and he bowls really bad. And then the yeah. next year he bowls great and you bowl really bad. And mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't really got on the same. The first year we ever bowled together, we actually both bowled pretty good at the same time but since then it's just gone downhill i mean to be fair now everybody's going to be on the same practice plan as west normally is in the off season that's true so, <laughs> I, I mean he's so it's, it's fair game now. people so he's going to be prepared for this going in i yeah. love this <laughs> yeah, he's he's team, team west he's, he's going to be ready to go <laughs> hopefully that event happens so I have a question for you guys. Like, since you asked me about my whole, you know, thoughts about being in shape and fit, what are your thoughts? Because obviously the guys, um, they think differently, and I don't think it's taken as serious in a guys' tour as it is in a women's tour. Because if you compare the two, I can confidently say that the women, they're more serious about their appearance, about the shape and all that. Would you agree, disagree? Chris Vi wouldn't agree. <laughs> uh, I think the friend. younger guys are a little different to the older guys, though. Yeah, yeah, I believe. Like Chris, if you look at Chris, I mean, you look at the Tan brothers, and uh, Marshall. The last fifteen years, yeah. Uh, in general, uh, and I do think you know, like if you go to the ITRC and they have their combine stats and those kind of things, they do. Uh, the strength testing on the women's side, th those who are are the strongest and in the best shape tend to be people who you see on TV a lot. On, on the guy's side, it doesn't end up being as much that way uh, other than flexibility. Like your leg and core strength seem to play a big part, but not as much as hand strength that, that does show up uh, on some of those stats there on that board. <laughs> I could tell that Verity saw this comment. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think that's profiling. That that is that is it's it's amazing. You guys now, how far apart in England were are you from? Almost as far as is humanly possible in England. Yeah, sure. pretty much. Here it wouldn't be considered far, but over there, very far. Yeah. So northern, northern, southern. Yeah. Well, I'm northwest, and Verity's on the extreme south coast. Okay, Verity, what's the stereotype of the uh, of the Northeast? No, no I'm Very Northwest. Oh, you're Northwest. <laughs> Northern yes. monkeys and Southern fairies is generally the. Uh... I mean, yeah, he looks like a monkey, right? So it's perfect. <laughs> now, <laughs> they kind of get they kind of happen the same way. I don't know if it happens the same on the women's tour as it does the men's tour. Like the the Europeans are kind of thrown together. You guys all are a bunch of. Uh, of you went to Weber, uh, you know, and in successive years, and uh, before Diana got in there, Verity said how much smarter you were than Diana. So <laughs> I, she didn't really say that. Uh, <clears throat> but you guys do y'all get kind of thrown together and get to, you know, like we did here. Uh, do you guys actually like each other? Sometimes depends. <laughs> oh, I, I, I have, a, I have a quick question for you guys so it's really the three of you isn't it it's you two and uh, and daria like you yeah. travel around a lot together which role does each one take like you know like in our group of like say our group of four martin is very much like the pacifier he's like you know very easygoing i'm the person who organizes everything 
Dom's the needy diva type one. <laughs> and Oscar's the, you know, silent type. So I think we're all easy going. Verity is definitely the most like yeah, I'm organized. The organized one. Yeah, she's the organized one. I was the first chair, and then I was like, okay, Verity can have that job. Um, Dadia is the most easy, <laughs> laid back, chill. And I think I'm more in between, but I'm closer to Daria's like yeah. chill than Verity. I would say they're a lot more laid back in terms of, especially like schedule and things like that. Yeah, but I think like I agree that the Europeans are mostly hanging out together, like the Americans and then the Asians. But I think it's just a culture thing. Like we just understand each other. Like we come from that part of the world. Um, just get along really good, I think. When I, uh, when I first came out my first year on tour, um, a Hall of Famer who will re remain anonymous told me that uh, education level tended to have a, a large part to play in which guys hung out with which guys. So, just, I uh, think for us, though, that's because, we, because we studied together, we already kind of had that connection. So it just made things a little bit easier to be able to talk to one another and plan things. And myself and Daria came on tour at the same time and we were both living in Florida. So it was kind of easy for us to plan some stuff together. We traveled together just because we could, we were both in the same area and we flew together and it just made a lot of sense. How many times have you guys played each other between the three of you on television? I bowled against Verity once and I bowled against Daria once. Yeah, I bowled against Daria once and Diana once on TV. So what's the record? They can beat me. <laughs> and I, I'm at zero right now. Did you lose the diary when she won her first title? Yes. Right. So so you're you're the one who needs to have the. Uh, I need to step round. things up a little bit. I remember there was a time when I eat Dom all the time. Now that doesn't happen. He's on like <laughs> a, you know like a five year run of like taking the bonus off me every time. Yeah. That's gonna happen to me soon. I just. Needed to tease them a little bit. You're just hitting your stride. Okay. You're just gonna you're just gonna crawl up on the outside and then bang. Well, you can always tell who needs the confidence boost. It's nice of you to be the organized one. Keep their you know, keep their spirit. Make them feel good. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Have you been doing the haircuts as well? Me? Oh, not the no, girls Verity. don't like my hair at all. I don't think they you they can touch your hair. No, they her. want me to grow it yeah. out, and I think I'm keeping it short on purpose just to piss them I off. I think she because... is, because anytime we talk about it, it's like, well, maybe I'll go even shorter. Maybe I'll change it to purple. <laughs> this, this, this brings us on to a nice segment, Chris. Um, oh, that's it. There we go. Oh, okay. uh, I, I felt like I should um, – I don't know if all of the viewers have seen uh, it, so oh. I uh, pulled together a small compilation of uh, Diana through the years. <laughs> Oh, so, we've only got three in the current do because you've been in this kind of short blonde one for quite a while. So I, have. I really hope you got the years ago curly. Um, the, the next one is the one I'm really proud of. This That's one. Halloween. <laughs> it's got two different pictures with that same haircut. So I, I thought that was that. the Chesapeake Open. I didn't know. That, yeah, that, that was a purple. I like my purple hair. Yeah. You missed out on the best one, though, which was, like, the curly, crazy... Yeah, the, the original queen. The original. I think I have some. It's actually funny because I was talking to my mom a couple of weeks ago, and we're talking about, like, my hair and how, like, it's been crazy since I was born. Like, let me see if I can find it on my phone and I'll show you. So I've had... Something done to my hair since I was very little. I think when I was like 14, I have it on my phone. I'm going to show you guys. I had uh, dreadlocks. Is that what it's called in English? Like yeah. dreads? Yeah. Yeah. So I had that. I had all kinds of stuff. So while you guys are chatting, let me see if I can uh, find some. The, uh, Verity, how many different hairstyles have you had here? Um, I think I've only gone through two. Wet dog and then poodle. <laughs> 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 there was there was a time where I didn't know what hair dryer was, so all I ever did was have my hair wet and like almost like a lot of gel and very like crispy because I hated the fluff. And now I've progressed and I've learned what a hair dryer is, and now it's more of a poodle stage. And um, that's about it. I'm now I never cut it in any like fancy way or anything like that. 
it turns out even if you're both foreigners and you're both under five foot six, it doesn't mean that the rooming thing always works out great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying so, to find my. Uh, tell us about your uh, your. Uh, you've got a new uh, Instagram account with your <laughs> group. Yeah, the trio bowling trio. So it's just a page for myself, Diana, and Daria. Obviously, when we were going to be traveling on tour this <laughs> summer, we were going to do a lot more with it um, and try and post a lot. A lot of people like the idea of the three of us together. So we wanted to have a separate platform to where we could promote the three of us. Um, obviously in this time we don't, we're kind of running out of pictures that we have together. Um, they did a live last week or something, I think it was. Diana yes. and uh, Daria are on that page just to kind of talk to people and just an, another platform really, share some behind the scenes that people wouldn't normally see on our personal pages. So are you guys doing that at any sort of consistent time? Because I know that you two have been going live on Wednesdays, I think. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. So are you still kind of having that as a consistent thing or do people just have to keep keep an eye out for when you might pop up? Well, we didn't do it last week because it was me and Daddy, but uh, I don't, what is it today, Monday? I, I, can't, I don't even know. So yeah, I guess I'm going live tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, originally we were, okay, let's do it, try and do it consistently each week. But as each week kind of progressed, I felt like there were less and less people watching because there's not really much that happens week in or week out between the two of us because we're just at home. So I don't know if that made a difference. Um, and I'd been live like on my own Facebook page and then they did it on the trios page. So I just felt like there'd already been so many live videos that sometimes people just get fed up with them. Yeah, I think that is. I, I I think that well, from what we've been seeing, that maybe if you guys uh, try and figure out a way to send a link to Instagram mm -hmm. and have it on Facebook, it seems like you can get a few more people in, and it's a little easier with you know what we're saying about the notifications and stuff. So you guys have got pretty good followings on both uh, Facebook and Instagram. So. Incidentally, on this site that we're using, you can stream to both at the same time. No, you can't. I take that back. You can't stream. <laughs> Um, but I know, uh, I, I, you know, Sloan is in the in the chat with us, and he and Frankie did try to do Instagram for a while, and they had to move over to Facebook because it was just it was too hard to get uh, basically get the word out in time for people to catch them live. Right. Yeah, and we tried to promote it, you know, posting the day before or something like that, but Instagram just doesn't seem to get as many people. Okay, so it sounds like uh, Diana's got this picture ready for us. Are you ready? Well, I have plenty, but this one is, uh, yeah, cute. Ready? There we go. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I had some dreadlocks. This is me and Walter at the World Cup. Yeah. Oh, so that's the one, yeah, that's the one that Verity is talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's a big hair days. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the one. So my coach, actually, Ruben Gregosian, uh, he called me Medusa because he thought that's what my hair looked like. Um, well, yeah. Um, I might have remembered this incorrectly, but when you sort of started bowling in Latvia, you almost were like there was nobody bowling in Latvia about the time you started almost. Like Sid Allen came across, I think it was, and... Yes, Sid and Ruben, they both came to my country. I don't remember exactly what year. Uh, I think it was, I must have been like 14. And they started a bowling program um, in my country. So they kind of developed a youth team and adult team. And our adults weren't very good, uh, but actually our youth team was pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah, you and uh, Arthur as well yes. was going pretty good as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Maria, she was my biggest rival um, at the time. She's super short, but she was just, she had that is rib rate. I mean, it was insane. So. And then you suddenly from nowhere, Latvia was winning junior medals and yeah. a pretty strong team. And it was, it was kind of crazy. Like overnight, suddenly like Latvia was a bowling, uh, was, was a bowling country. Like, yeah, I'm actually like, like getting goosebumps now, but that was Sid Allen and Ruben. They did the work. Uh, they started the program and our kids were awesome. And just, I, in 2010, I decided to move to the United States and go to college and bowl. And then when I came back, um, like for Christmas break, nobody was bowling anymore. And I'm like, okay, what happened? Yeah. So I don't want to blame it that, you know, just because I left, everybody else is done. Uh, but I don't know, like nobody else is bowling in my country. We don't even have a team. Like, 
Can't now, even build a team. It was strange. Like us to say, Sid came over and he built the program up and he did an awesome job. He actually, uh, I'm probably forgetting history exactly right, but Sid was quite instrumental in the Malaysian program when they first started. Yes. So he's a, uh, he, somewhat the king of starting from scratch um he's done it a couple of times i think he's actually working in singapore right now um i think he out. was in singapore last time i knew yes i think he was also helping england wasn't he for a little yeah, bit a while ago a yeah, while ago, yeah. And, uh, we, we had some interesting conversations <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh it's it's quite amazing how he's been able to do that twice yeah. Question here, and it says to England's best right there. My question is, do you feel, and let's just make it the PWBA since this is your show. So uh, the PWBA, <laughs> PWBA is more competitive now that the rest of the world competes more in the PWBA and a pretty easy. I, yeah, I think so. I think even every year that I've been on tour, it gets more and more competitive each year, especially I think college bowling does have a lot to do with that because as people graduate from university, now they can transition right into the PWBA. And I think that you get so much, so much talent from there. And I think every year it kind of gets harder on tour because there's so many more bowlers. And now I think a lot more international people are coming over to bowl. You know, Singapore will come over for a month or something like that as preparation for one of their games. Sweden will send teams over. And I think it's getting even bigger because everyone wants to compete in it. Yeah, I also think that people are starting to work even harder, like because the tour is very new. So I had this uh, conversation the other day, I think with Daria. Uh, so Verity and Daddy didn't bowl the very first year when the Peter Bay came back in 2015. And it was so new. So the majority of the bowlers were like, they didn't experience the old Peter BA. So everything was so new, they didn't know what to expect. And then as the years went on, they realized, okay, well, this is what I want to do for a living. So and I want to win. So let me work even harder. Like, and I think, I know I've been working even harder every single year. Um, and I think the other girls too. So the bar keeps raising, rising. Well, you got one fan who tuned in for a Facebook live. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it eventually. Uh, do you associate with other professional athletes from your countries? I know Barnes and LeBron hang out all the time. No, I just go for tea with the Queen every now and then. That's all. <laughs> you know, she makes time for you on your busy schedule when you get back. Yeah, to of course. <laughs> Oh dear! You have so, uh, you have famous athletes from Latvia that, uh, that are you in touch with anybody there? Uh, not no. really. No. no. Uh, we have a tennis player. She's really good, but I, even though our country is very very small, we mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never met any of the other professional athletes. You love when you're young, so. Yes, that's true. Well, we had, um, okay, so the basketball player, Kristaps Porzingis, that used mm -hmm. to play for Knicks, now he, yeah. So we actually have a common friend. So that's as close as I get to the superstars from Latvia. So, um, but I've never actually met him. I was about to say, for most people in this country, he would easily be the most famous Latvian after you. Yeah. Well, I would say the tennis player, uh, yeah, a little more famous than me. I was about to say so famous we can't remember his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? Uh, they were talking about yeah. Ina Paez, but I don't think that she's laughing. No. Um, so uh, you guys both made the switch at the start of the year. Do you feel like it's a kind of a cruel irony that you spent all that time trying to learn the balls and everything else, and now you just don't get to use them? Yeah, so frustrating, honestly. <laughs> Especially with the tour coming up, it was so important to figure out the bowling balls and all of that, and then it was like, oh, okay, nope, you don't get to do no, it anymore. Yeah, I actually had a couple of tournaments that I bowled with Storm. Um, I bowled in Finland, Bowl Master, that was my first event, and then I bowled in Iceland. So I got a little bit chance to throw the equipment. So um, how many balls did you end up having to drill to get to feel like, you know, you had an arsenal set up? I don't I even know how many I have right now. I think I feel like uh, whatever number you're going to give is going to feel like it's not that many, as I rumored Dom. 
I think 15 is my number. Like I have out of the 15 that I have, I'm covered. Like from your thing to spare ball to the big, everything. Is that a lot or is that not a lot? No? Okay. That's, that's that's a bare bones arsenal for me, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's what that's that's what we drill to like you know so we still get the gaps there so we've got gap fillers <laughs> but i think that's like the thing in the guys tour like you guys drill so many bowling balls during the events like we maybe drill one an event and how many would you say you drill like five it a depends. stop no it really a day <laughs> but it depends on like in general you don't i mean some people do but i i don't necessarily chase you know, good money after bad. So if I don't bowl very well on the first block, unless it's a really long event, there's no reason to drill a ball because you're not drilling it for any, you're drilling it for a purpose. And if you're not competitive in the tournament, then you don't really need a ball at that point. But like, you know, Dom, me and Dom have had really successful World Series where we might have drilled 20 balls during a week. Wow. Well, I definitely you know, think- on Four or five different patterns and you've got, three or four blocks in the world championships and things like that. And especially this year um, with how high scoring the world championships was, if you had the right ball, then it was game on. And if you didn't, you know, the difference between the right ball and the wrong ball on the guys tour can be the difference between averaging 230 and 250. So, yeah. Yeah, well, that could be the difference between the guys tour and the girls tour because – I feel like we ball on some really tough conditions and like we don't strike very often in our patterns. So for us, it's all about controlling and pocket pretty much. And I feel like at majors, girls drill more balls just because it's a longer format and you we stay on the same pattern, but you see differences each day. So you start to drill mm -hmm. based on that or based on the fact, okay, you're going to be bowling on fresh so much because now it's match play. Maybe you need extra balls for fresh. Whereas the guys obviously change pattern so much more. I don't know. I think that has a lot to do with it. A little more yeah. transition as well. So I think you end up with, yeah. you know, going through multiple balls during. So I do think it plays into it, but like I said, down drills a lot. I think I'm more of a one to two, uh, you know, two on the good weeks. Maybe none on the bad, <laughs> on the bad especially once you're five or six weeks in. Chris had an uh, an eye opening uh, summer when he uh, <laughs> when he drove around with me and Dom. <laughs> I think it became uh, oh, that's what the kids do now. Is <laughs> you guys know that this event pays ten thousand for first and like last checks four hundred, right? And we're like, yeah. If your drill bill is 240, I'm pretty sure you're not drinking, breaking even this week. <laughs> Here's a familiar name. Rip and I, tell us the truth, what it was like when you first showed up in the U.S. Nice. What was the biggest surprise when you first got here? The, well, I've been to U.S. before I moved a couple of times, and I've been traveling since I was in my mom's belly. Like, I, I'm a traveler, always have been. So I've seen different kinds of cultures, different parts of the world, um, and nothing really surprised me about the U.S. The one thing that I absolutely cannot stand is the fast food. Like that is like McDonald's and Burger King and everything is like drive through and so horrible for you. And that's the one thing that just drives me crazy. Yeah, I think I obviously, when I moved, it was to Lake Wales, which is in the middle of nowhere. And I was so surprised that there was nothing. Like you, there's no corner shop. There's no, no pub around the corner. Just the little the little things like that. It's like, where am I? Like I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Lake Wales, I don't think is necessarily representative of America. <laughs> Not quite, but I, that's a big image I have in my head. Probably should have went to Wichita State. I mean, you would have been around civilization. Too cold. Still not that much there, though. I've been there. I mean, like, you're making Wichita sound like it's Hollywood. Only compared <laughs> to Lake Wales. <laughs> oh, dear, that's funny. So, um, you were talking about the majors. Um, obviously, this is a pretty easy question for Diana because the Queens is clearly her favorite one. Of, of the big tournaments, which is your favorite one, Verity? Probably the U.S. Open, at least when the U.S. Open is on hard stuff, not the year that the U.S. Open was like on a house shot because it was just a little bit of a strike fest. But 
I think that it's just such a long, grueling format that I really like that event. I haven't necessarily always bowled very well at it, but I think it's one of the good ones. And it's, it's funny you should say that about it being difficult because um, we bowled the Weber Cup last year at the same time. Yeah. You guys were bowling the uh, US Open and you were bowling in um, Texas Station. And Texas Station is one of the uh, more difficult places to strike, um, I think. And uh, me and Dom, we had a bad day at the Weber Cup and we decided, Dom said, well, what can we do? We need to do something to make us feel better. And I said, well, the only way that you can feel less miserable is to go and watch people who are going to feel more miserable and <laughs> playing on the really hard pattern today. So Dom said, great idea. So we headed over and we watched you guys and yeah, yeah, that suddenly made us feel a little bit better because man, they looked miserable that one day. I think I think they were tough. Yes. It was literally the day that you, you guys, every time you missed a hair to the right, it was the two ten. So I think that the most fun that Dom had was uh teasing um Matt Gasson as he was trying to coach uh Giselle and uh uh, she just kept screaming at Matt, like, why would it strike? And Dom kept going, I know, because Dom had a couple of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I think last year was our first year during the US Open, we actually had four different patterns. Because mm -hmm. before that, we only had one pattern. Um, yeah. So it made it a little extra difficult this past year. Yeah, yeah so and I, course, I like that. I guess you had the same deal with the balls as well, where you can only have like eight or ten balls. Eight. Yeah, which we've had that in previous years. It's just previously you bowled on fresh burn and double burn versus yeah. is bowling on fresh all the time just of a new pattern. And I guess for, I guess for you guys it was a, a little bit easier. Like in the guys, fresh burn and double burn is a little bit more extreme than um, for yeah. you guys with the fresh, especially for the two of you who can kind of get in, on the left side of most of the ladies. Yeah, I'd rather bowl on the burn and the double burn than on fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you uh, did you figure out a solution yet, Diana? Because I knew that you had a very uh, you were very frustrated by the double burn with the ball return. Um, no, I mean, kind of. I don't know. I I need to bowl, <laughs> then I'll let you know. <laughs> no, I feel like you figured it out because remember when your footwork was. Bad to yes. into it, I, I did time. fix my footwork. Um, it's just when I do three step and I get in front of ball return, I can't get the speed up. So I guess I need to go to the gym more often and get even stronger. I'm not sure. That's um, what I'm thinking. <laughs> if you're no, in but, the ball in front of the ball return. Yeah, I just um, the one thing I was working on, and you know that too, uh, like the releases, like staying up the back of it more, and um, that's the one thing I before the coronavirus, I was becoming really, really good at. So if I do feel like I'm not throwing it um, hard enough when I three-step, then at least I can manipulate the ball motion with my hand. Yep. So. I mean, you can either do that or you can go the route that uh, Belmo goes, which is he never stands in front of the boards and he just drifts more. He drifts more, yeah. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult to do without trip. I just want one time, I'm like, one time will he clip out I just wanted to clip the side of the ball return as he does it, as he takes that massive step left. <laughs> It'd be worth it, just just to see it one time. <laughs> We've got a uh, question for Verity. I am in Florida right now. The bowling center in Georgia that I normally practice at did open this past weekend, but I'm not there at the moment. I'm still in Florida. So. And then uh, Andy Patterson has a question that I know that me and Chris were looking at. Um, how was it to compete in the men? Um, how did you uh, compete match up with the power from the men? It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was actually funny to me how the patterns we bowled on were similar, I would say, in hardness as what we bowled on with the women's US Open, but all of the men were complaining how hard it was. <laughs> and it made it made me want to see the men bowl on some of the women's events because I would just be so curious as to whether they would complain every week, like everyone was complaining at the US Open. But I no, I really enjoyed bowling that event and I, I bowled very good. I was very happy with how I bowled. I don't know, a bunch of guys whose rev rates are 500 that made a career out of creating more room than everyone else, pulling on things where you can't create room. I think they'd be fine with it. <laughs> About six of them would be. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, usually on the guys tour, there are five, there are like four and a half guys, because even the guy who finishes fifth can usually complain about it. Like the four guys who make the show are usually okay with it. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it was nice to actually bowl with the men and be able to get left. Whereas when, I, when I'm with the women, sometimes I'm forced to stay a little bit further right, which I don't necessarily like as much. So when I was with the men, I was almost the one that was furthest right. But I actually enjoyed that because I was able to hook, hook it a little more than I can on the women's side. Yeah, the lanes open up. They do open up faster, differently. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, people are three-stepping by game three. Yeah. Yeah, once they don't, once their ball doesn't make it back, they just keep moving left. Yeah. Or anytime yeah, they that, was, right. that was cool. Basically, anytime they miss the pocket, if you miss right, you move left. If you go through the face, you move left. If the air conditioning comes on, you move left. If you switch pairs, you move left. That's that's basically what I've learned. It was it was very funny. You should say that because that's what Dom said after he bowled the doubles with Simo. He goes, <laughs> "I thought he was genius. Then I realized he just moves two left on every pad. There isn't. There's no." There's no smart. There's no, he just does it. <laughs> but they, you guys do it, and you then don't two ten. You don't two eight ten. Like that just, it's like that doesn't exist. Oh, well, not, not everybody that gets away with that. I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, the guys with rubber eight. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so who's mean yeah. at guys or girls? I don't think I like. Think I don't think anybody's me. I just think the guys, like, they complain more. They get frustrated more. They rip their shirts oh, apart. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think I would agree with that. I feel like I mean, the girls I would, get offended more. Sorry? I feel like the girls get more offended. Oh, definitely. Although there are, there are some guys who get a little upset these days. Who's meaner to each other? Probably the guys. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we don't see that side of, side with you guys where you're I guess it's probably true. The guys are actually with each other. each other. The women are just mean behind each other. So That is true. That is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which I don't understand. I I don't like women for that reason. Because <laughs> you're English, Verity. We stop the front. <laughs> right in the front. Yeah, I, just, I don't get it. Right here. Already. So Diane didn't want to give me high fives. That was very mean. <laughs> I didn't want to, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> high five on the yes, no, there's a reason. Okay, let me explain because I'm not mean, okay? <laughs> so my hands, they used to sweat so much. Like I actually used to be embarrassed to give high fives because if I give you a high five, like your hand is going to be drenched from mine. Like it was that disgusting. So then I found out you can actually do like little injections. It's like 20 needles in your palm and they stop the sweat. So it works for a year. So that's what I've been doing. So I'm sorry, Tina. Or, or you can go with the Carolyn excuse of, I don't give five. Well, I actually don't. In the tournaments, I don't. But like, yeah, I'm not mean. I think I was on my third year tour, and I'm crossing with Norm, and you know, da da da, throw a strike. He kind of goes, he goes, I, I, I don't play patty cake. <laughs> patty cake. Right. That's funny. <laughs> so, so norm yeah norm norm gets very fri uh, fried with five <laughs> so the best thing you can possibly do against norm when a lot of people are watching is you if he gets a strike you offer to give him five wow. and i'm supposed to bowl uh doubles with them mostly so who with dom and oh, i don't dom. like high fives and huh oh, no 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 norm i'm talking about norm, oh, norm. Oh, dom okay. fine. dom's english we're all nice <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Corona. <laughs> what was that, Stu? I said the English are misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. Very with uh, coaching uh, college. What's what's the biggest surprise there, and how does that affect your bowling when you're not coaching? Um. I think it's helped my bowling more than anything, just because I've been watching their ball motion so much more. So I think it's actually helped me and it's made me think a little bit more when I bowl. A lot of the times, like I'll beat myself up or I have to, I sometimes I find myself imagining, okay, what would I be telling the players right now? Like, would I be telling them to move? Maybe I need to move. So I start to listen to myself a little bit more versus not trusting myself, I guess. 
Yeah, um, so, I think that's ironic that when Kim Kearney won that U.S. Open for 100 grand, she was coaching that, not bowling nearly as much, but she yeah. felt like she was sharper coming into it, like you're talking about. Yeah, one of the hardest things definitely is that I don't get to bowl as many tournaments as I would like to. Um, every weekend that I have off from coaching, I try to bowl something, whether it's local, whether it's a regional. But obviously, there's times where I'd like to bowl some of the bigger events or go abroad and bowl a little bit more to get that experience, because I think the best practice is bowling tournaments. And sometimes I miss out on that because of the coaching. Um, so I really just have to try and use the coaching to benefit me in another way. She, she definitely is a Wes's partner there, Chris. The best practice is bowling tournaments. There you go. <laughs> but I still like to practice. <laughs> oh, dear. I love Wes. He's the best. Uh, mixed doubles with the four of us. What are the two, what, what two I guess, would mi mix the best, mesh the best? I, I, I Not sure. Uh, maybe we'll take the two English people. At least we'd be able to understand each other. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've about run out of Barnes's, so you know, I'm, it'll bowl with me anyway. So uh, here we go: milk before cereal or after cereal? It's just... After. Uh, after. Because otherwise, you don't know how much milk you're putting in. Really, you have to see the cereal with the milk. See, when I do it for Brady in the morning, he likes it. I do it uh, after, but he likes it the other way around because then the cereal stays more crispy. Thanks. There you go. His Fruit Loops are a serious business. <laughs> Never had Fruit Loops. Probably best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to stay that way too. <laughs> All right, Chris, have you got your uh, 10 questions lined up? Oh, we do. We Ten do. questions. Ten okay. frames with the Euro duo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was really wild. Oh, all right. Man, uh, your first celebrity crush. Who, me? Both. Oh, is this both? Both. Uh, Alex first Pepper. celebrity crush. I'm going to say Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I used a skateboard like a while ago. So, yeah. Okay, the hairstyle is now explained. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Verity. Alex Petrova. What was that you broke? Alex Petrova. Alex. Alex Petrova. Who is that? I don't know. Just some actor, but now I don't like him because he has a load of tattoos. Until he got tattoos when I was younger, he was a crush, but not anymore. <laughs> uh, one thing you've tried that you'll never, you'll never do again or try again. Um, Goldschlager. <laughs> Jaeger. Jaeger. Well, on that topic, then, I think you would do that again. Come on, no, uh -uh. yes, that you would. One 100%. Time, nope, that one time ruined me forever. I think you'll be doing it again. I'm sure of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> since we're on this topic, out of the two of you, who's the worst drunk? Verity. <laughs> I had to clean my that's... car one time, yeah. so uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there? No? Not over there? Verity. I mean... Verity. <laughs> yeah. I it depends. Know. I think it depends. Like Verity becomes I mean... like this sad person when she drinks, and I become <laughs> like this crazy person. So it depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we both can be. We can both be pretty bad, but we're good at looking after each other. Yes. Who's been carried home more? Who what? Who's been? Who's had to carry the other one home more? Well, my car had to carry Verity a couple of times. So. <laughs> yeah, I would say me more than Diana, probably. Okay, if you were to include um, Dara in this mix, would that change any of these answers? Um. No, I think Verity still would be. <laughs> yeah. Verity's the lightweight. Yes, I think Daria, like, it really takes a lot for her to, like, get to that level to where she has no idea what her name is. Like, she's, she's more experienced. But I, I think feel like so. she gets to that level a lot. I would say she gets to that more than we get to that. 
<laughs> well, I'm talking about the tour. I don't know what you guys did at Weber like when I left. So. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> The worst thing you've watched since the pandemic started. Worst thing we've watched. Oh, the the coronavirus deaths and like, ugh, yeah, no. I I watched the Netflix show called Pandemic, and it was rubbish. <laughs> the the most irrational fear. What does irrational fear mean? Can you please translate? Um, <laughs> like being scared of something that really isn't that scary, like. Like being this, like being petrified of the tiniest spider that's like this big. Uh, I I do hate bees and wasps, and I will scream if it comes near me, which is really irrelevant because I'm so much bigger than the bee or the wasp. Is, I hate them. <laughs> like even talking about them frustrates me because I hate them. Yeah, I don't like bugs in general, but actually my stupid fear is um, darkness. Like when it's dark in the room. Yeah. Nightlight. Yes. Yeah, need to get one. Well, on a, on a brighter note, what's your guilty pleasure? Um, ice cream. Yeah, it would probably have to be chocolate. But, but chocolate. not this and um, not this American. No, chocolate's <laughs> terrible. <either. laughs> no. Yeah. no, trust me, I, I get the good English stuff that I bring. Yeah, I actually anymore. agree. I, it's much better Finnish. I, you're a, you're I got a, a in general, it's, uh, an Easter care package from my mum, which was quite delicious. Oh. Yeah, chocolate, chocolate and bread, much better in Europe. And cheese. Like, yeah, and cheese. Steak, like a thousand times better here than it is in England. <laughs> it's not even close. It's bizarre. But. Yeah, and at some point, somebody will introduce seasoning to England, which would be cool. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, all you need is some salt. Salt, <laughs> really salt. Yeah, I guess most Americans have salt is the only seasoning uh, a lot of us need, I guess, probably. Uh, the perfect date night. Perfect date night. Dinner. I would say picnic on the beach during a sunset. I hope Adam is listening. <laughs> <laughs> And that beach being an island. In well, mark that. 52 minutes, 15 seconds, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I just any beach. It doesn't have to be an island. I mean, if you know, Fiji would be even better. But. <laughs> in theory, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very? Um, I could definitely go for the picnic, but I feel like a nice candle lit dinner, maybe some roses. Traditional. Yeah. Nice. Okay. The craziest rumor you've heard about yourself. Rumor? Craziest rumor. Oh, that I'm gay. Oh, I had that too. Yeah, that was probably <laughs> mine as well. Actually, that you heard it too. All three of us had it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But mine, mine was during college. My The collegiate bowling rumor was that there were two lesbians. Hey. And uh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Hey, just making the world a better place. That's <laughs> <important>. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's a quarantine beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the most famous person in your phone. Most famous. Oh, I heard you ask Danielle this one, so I should answer me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most famous. Can I Probably. look at my phone? Uh, oh. Think. Probably like Liz Johnson. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dar Dari is probably more famous than Liz Johnson now. Only she on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, social media. Yeah. million Twitter followers and two million people watching her trying to take the 10 pin out of a full rack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah. say. Uh, Only bowlers, though. I don't have anyone famous that's not a bowler. Yeah, me neither. So I'm going to say Liz Johnson. Okay, well, in that case, then who is the most the person most likely to ghost you on a text? My dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's very good at not responding, and then I call him, and I'm like, "Why didn't you respond?" Oh, well, I didn't see your message. 
I'm actually going to say uh, Gary Hossenberg. Every time I need what? something from him, I message him and I never hear from him until like a week later. So, <laughs> well, he might Gary. be watching now, so now he knows. <laughs> yeah, respond to my message, Gary. Hi, Gary. We all love you. <laughs> yeah, I used to be Bugsy Kelly, to be fair. So I guess that's probably about right. Yeah. So, <laughs> ask him for a raise. He's probably not going to return the calls. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of those right now. <laughs> All right, in the tenth frame, one shot in your career you'd like to have back. Three, six, nine, ten against Kelly Kulik on my first show. The spare shot or the strike shot? The strike shot. Okay. I have two. Either, uh, yeah, no, probably that one. I have another oh, I have one, but that would probably but be yeah. The first. I mean. <laughs> yeah. But there's two that really come to mind. That's one of them. And what's the other one? Um, <laughs> against <laughs> against uh, Shannon O'Keefe, where I had the front eight, and then I missed the head. Ooh, that was no, a no, good no, match no, there. No no, 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 we're not getting you let get uh, that easily. You missed the head pin. Yeah, <laughs> so the left on the front eight. Uh, I was actually going to bring that story up because you. Uh, that week, you led the tournament average in 206, and you bowled 266 and didn't win. So that was – Yeah, because yeah. the scores for that tournament were so low. And then it, it was, was a true. show, and it was like, how is this happening? I mean, bear in mind, both me and Shannon did Brooklyn a couple of times, but still, 260 and to lose. And yeah. I lost yeah. by two pins. It happens sometimes when uh, it does. you get that yeah. second thing, the second mm -hmm. thing going. It, uh, yeah. it finds a way sometimes. <laughs> So what's yours then, Diana? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is last year's US Open, the position round. Um, I bowled against Shannon Sellens, and I had a very good chance of making the show. Um, so it came down to the last couple of frames. So I'll take one of those shots back um, and make the show. Well, there we have it. Yeah, with the exception of one person, everybody has a shot pretty quickly that uh, it seems to come up. Uh, Dom, Dom's answer was, I don't think about shots that I don't want to think about. That was pretty much his answer. I was like, That's true. you're no fault. That's a good point. I would say that the only reason I had an answer to that is because I know that you guys ask it to everyone. So it, every time oh, I you watch prepared. the show, every time <laughs> I watch the show, it makes me think, what would my shot be? So I feel like that's the only reason I have an answer is because now I've been thinking about those bad shots. Yeah, I apologize for that. Unfortunately, Stu and I both have a few of our own, so it's easy. <laughs> we're just trying to drag everyone down to us. That's really what we're trying to do. <laughs> well, that's ten frames with um, Diana and Verity. We've got to uh, we've got to wrap it up a little bit quickly here because uh, Storm are about to start on uh, with Matt Canazzaro. Uh, they have story time with Matt Canazzaro coming up right after us on the Storm Channel. So uh, check that out. Um, we thank you guys for spending an hour with us. That went Yeah, by. thank you for having yeah, us. It was awesome. you watch the PWBA when they're back out on the lanes. It's, it Hopefully is soon. really exciting, high-level high level bowling for sure. And the PBA. All, all, of the, yeah, all of the PWBA is live on Bowl TV. So be sure to check that out. Yes. Any last words? Stay safe Thanks for joining us. Wash your yeah. hands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pray. Uh, hopefully, bowling is going to come back soon. And yeah, thank you for having us. And follow us both on our social media. Yes. No and the bowling trio. Bowling trio. Yes. Instagram. Yes. There you go. Stu? <laughs> well, that's it for me. Thanks for showing up. Uh, we're back on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we'll have Joe right. Hutchinson. And I know a lot of you young people don't know who he is, but he tells better stories than anyone I know. This one will be a throwback series with lots of names you recognize, but you've never heard these stories, I guarantee you. So for the Beef and Barnsley Show, show up Wednesday, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, and we'll be there with Joe Hutchinson. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless. Bye. Bye.